Okay, uh, TP2 here. I want to show you a simple, easy, emergency battery backup station. Uh, the components are a good charger. Um, we'll talk about amperage as far as your charger goes in just a minute. This is a Schumacher. Uh, it's got several um, ways, uh, several batteries it can charge. It's, this uh, I've got it on lead acid battery, so those are standard. It can charge also an AGM battery or a gel battery. Your charge speeds are slow, fast, and start, which is, when, on this one, when it starts, is I think a hundred. Uh, 100 amps I think start and then there's, there's a maintain let's uh, let's take a look at the inverter next this is a Duracell 800 watt inverter it's got your outlets on the front of it it will tell you your voltage but the batteries right now are at 12.9 uh, this one says 12.7, this one says 12.9, so I'm, I'm thinking it's somewhere in between. I think my battery, uh, my tester said 12.79, so it's right at 12.8. Okay, there's no load on it right now because I don't have anything plugged into it. And the voltage is 115. Now, this Duracell comes with its own set of cables, and they're made with... Uh, alligator clips or battery clips whatever you call these uh, this is coming in and the reason I've got it set up like this is I've got my positives in the back and I color coated the tops of them with red just in case sometimes and, and the wire also that I joined them together simply because sometimes I get out here without my glasses and it's kind of hard to see pluses and minuses on the batteries there's a the minus minus that's negative side but uh, when you combine them together like this, uh, it uh, keeps your battery 12 volts. So I'm going from negative to negative, positive to positive with a small cable. Uh, it's a number four gauge. And uh, you can, you know, I could, I could use one battery uh, or, or I could use 10 batteries. It doesn't matter. But as long as you hook them up uh, negative to negative all the way across, positive to positive all the way, all the way across, you're going to stay 12 volts. Uh, so coming in from the charger, I've got a red cable obviously on the positive, one on the negative. So I'm charging the two batteries as one because they're joined together with the cables. It's basically one battery now, one 12 volt battery. And I've got the uh, inverter cables on the other posts. I've got the positive obviously over there on the positive. The negative here on the negative that's for the inverter this is my um, power in from the grid <clears throat> so basically the idea is it keeps your batteries charged I've got them in a cabinet here out in the garage and um, keeps your battery charged you uh, can toggle between this one toggles between voltage and percentage. Right now it's not charging, so it doesn't have a percentage. So I will start the charge. I'll go to a slow charge. That's the turtle there. Here, start running. It's at 12 volts, 94%. And it'll come up from there, obviously 95%. It's already starting to come up, charging the two batteries, which again is one battery, basically. I can put it on the rabbit which is the, where it should be if you're charging, especially if you're charging two batteries. Because on this particular charger, that is 30, uh, 30 amps. And on a deep cycle battery like this, and that's what these are, is marine batteries, deep cycle batteries, you want to put a charge in them uh, as quickly as you can. Now, uh, let me turn this off, make a little noise, but it's at 95%, and like I say, it'll come up as it's charging. This shows that uh, it is hooked up to the batteries and that it's charging. Standard battery, lead acid battery, hooked up, cables are hooked up, charging at the fast rate. So we'll go ahead and turn it off and talk a little bit about um, 
what you can also do with the inverter. Uh, let's say you keep your you keep your batteries, or, or I keep my batteries. Again, this is me doing this. I'm not telling you what to do. I keep my batteries charged. Uh, they stay up right now. They're at 13. They're going to come down because it was putting a charge in it, and they'll they'll drift down a little bit from that. Uh, and keep my batteries charged. The lights go out. Uh, my wife is here alone. All she has to do is come in here. And I'll typically would have this off. Hold the button down. It goes off. Typically have that off. She comes in here, turns it on, hold the button down until it comes on. And then all she has to do is plug an extension cord in here, run that in the house, and use some of the, the uh, wise, uh, in fact I'll show you one in just a second, to distribute power to ne whatever necessities we have. Uh, 800 watts is not a huge one, but it will run, because I've had it plugged into, it will run refrigerator, it'll run my freezer, not necessarily at the same time, but it'll run the refrigerator, it'll run the freezer, it'll run lights, uh, it'll run um, you know fans if you need that. So. Uh, it can be invaluable. Can you imagine some of the people in in uh, New Orleans when Katrina came through, or when Sandy came through uh, up in the Northeast? If they just had something like this to charge their cell phones, to uh, run a radio or two, to provide some lights, to provide even uh, uh, some uh, power for a freezer or refrigerator. Uh, without having to stand in line for gasoline like so many were having to do with their five gallon buckets. It was all over the news. I know you saw it. It's just a uh, that's why we prepare. That's why we do things to prepare. So this is a very simple setup. And let me show you one other component that is probably just as important as these. And that component is called a kilowatt. And what it does, I'll plug it in. Uh, I'll cut it, uh, cut the video off and plug it in and show you. But what it does is tell you how many watts an appliance is using. Plug that into the wall, plug your appliance in here, and it'll tell you the voltage you get from, from the uh, grid. It'll tell you the watts or the amps that your appliance is uh, drawing, and that lets you know what you're going to need, what size inverter you're going to need, what size battery bank you're going to need, uh, all by finding out the wattage of your appliances, the ones that are crucial to you, the ones you have to run. Some of you may may have oxygen, and that's a crucial thing to have power. Some may have, a, what I think it's called the CPAP, the uh, uh, sleep apnea mask. There again, critical. Uh, so this could provide some power for that. You need to find out using this little device right here, find out what your uh, power source is uh, what your appliances draw and then you'll know how to size uh, anything that you might want such as this. Let me show you this uh, little kilowatt in action. Okay I couldn't wait on my freezer so I plugged my refrigerator into it and right now it is running 206-204 watts. Okay now if, if it just got through running and there's a lot of head pressure and you plug it in the little 800 watt inverter won't handle it but after it sits there for a while it uh, it surges and does fine again about 200 watts so this little device here lets you know what your appliances use and what you can expect and how to size an inverter and how to size a battery bank uh, this is using two and a half amps per hour and again, we're at 114, 115 volts, and we're at 60 hertz, like we're supposed to be. But 180, anywhere from 180 to 250, I think when it kicks on, it's, uh, it's well over 250, maybe 300, 400. Usually something like that will double uh, in a surge. But this gives you an idea. This is an invaluable tool, whether you, whether you do this or not. 
uh, this is an invaluable tool to find out your appliances and what they use and whether or not that you need to start replacing because so, some of the old refrigerators and such will use seven or eight hundred uh, watts just the refrigerator so this this it, that inverter would not work on that um, so anyway that uh, I, I would say a kilowatt would be the first thing you need to get I'm gonna have all the components of this uh, links to them listed below in the description and uh, I would uh, I've got a larger inverter than this and uh, you know you probably uh, if you build a system might want to get a larger inverter than the 800 watt so I'll list some of those down there also uh, but anyway this is just a simple simple small emergency power system throw in a solar panel or two uh, and a controller and I'll put a link to a controller down there, a 30 amp controller. And you have just a small solar powered system if you include the uh, uh, solar panel, obviously. Uh, let me show you one more thing, real quick, that you can do uh, if you don't, even if you don't have the battery bank or that. Uh, something else you can do just in a pinch in a big emergency. Okay, there's been a lot of talk about generators, people wanting a generator, and I have one, but. Uh, one thing I learned from Stephen Harris is just about everybody has a generator in that if you have a vehicle unless you walk to work or take a bus everywhere you go you have a generator this um, this uh, inverter or one like it uh, that has the pigtail or the alligator uh, clamps can just be clamped onto your battery run your extension cord in your house and you have a generator, you have power. Uh, 800 watts is what this one is. Uh, there's uh, obviously will be more. Some Anything any larger is probably not gonna come with the alligator clips. It's probably gonna, you're probably gonna have to have your own cables also. Some of the bigger inverters do not come with cables and you would need to size up anyway. Those uh, do not look to be number four. Those look to be uh, maybe six. And because a battery cable is typically four, and they don't look quite as thick as a battery cable. And I've got some number fours over here and that, uh, anyway, they just, they, they look a little small, but you would need to size your cables. If you got a bigger inverter, size your cables accordingly, but you can in a pinch. Leave your car idling out in the garage with the door open and or out in the yard or somewhere where you get some ventilation from uh, carbon monoxide, but, uh, and then run your extension cord in your house Again, put a Y on it or a three-way or something like that and run to some critical things in your house. So just an easy, simple way to keep power, to have power in your house. And you can't really see the lights on this, but uh, my battery is at 12.8 on my car. And the voltage out is 115. So anyway, that's a, that is an option there. If you don't go with the batteries, you don't go with everything else, uh, at least uh, I think a person should have, or at least I'm going to have, an inverter that I can use off my car. If I'm not home, my wife needs power, she doesn't have to go out there and try to pull on my generator because it is tough even for me to start. And all she has to do is clamp this on. Red is red, black is black, pretty easy to follow and she can run an extension cord in the house and run some things. So uh, just a quick, um, a quick way to get you some power inside your house when it is, uh, when it's critical. And again, if the, it just if, uh, if people uh, had something just this simple, uh, just think of how, uh, how well you could come through a catastrophe such as we have seen in recent days. I uh, hope this is helpful to you, and uh, maybe we'll uh, spur you to do something on your own. This is the way I did it. I'm not uh, in, any, in any way an electrician or anything like that. The disclaimer is uh, do this at your own risk, but um, uh, just consider doing something along this line if you want to. And that's, uh, I think we're going to be gone now.